Hello, I'm Lewis and this is how you can 3D print your very own steam train with cool water-based smoke effect. It also includes an inbuilt miniature camera which will stream a live view of what it sees back to your phone as it drives around your track. The lantern at the front also works and I think looks so cool at night. All of this is controlled from your existing smart telephone by connecting directly to the train's own inbuilt web server and Wi-Fi network, all powered by an ESP32. The track itself is 3D printed as well, and everything has been designed to an O-gauge model railway standard, so you can mix and match it with other O-gauge models and track. I've wanted a garden railway for quite some time, but the trains for those can be quite expensive particularly those with a cool smoke effect. So I decided to design and build this one of my own. It's been great fun to do. I've got to decorate it how I wanted to, and I've learned quite a few things along the way. So why not make one of your own? I'm going to show you now, step by step, how you can easily build one of these steam trains for yourself or for somebody else. You're going to need a few basic electronic components to do this, and you'll find links to all of these parts down below the video. You'll need an ESP32 cam, plus the hardware to flash it with, a common geared motor, a pair of three or five way Wago connectors, a motor driver, a DIY male USB connector, four rubber gaskets which will go on our wheels, atomizer and driver for the steam effect, an LED and suitable resistor, two magnets for each carriage plus one for the main train body, some bearings for our axles, some brass rod and a selection of bolts. You'll also need a compact USB battery pack to power the train, some 3D printing filament, I used 3D Jake's PLA for the train, and PETG for the tracks, as mine will be outdoors all year round. Electrical wire, I'll also be trimming down some female jumper wires to make easy use of their ready attached connectors. If you don't have a 3D printer, there's no need to fret. PCB Way, one of the sponsors of this video, not only manufacture PCBs, but can now also print on demand 3D printable objects. I'll tell you some more about that service later on in this video. All the files needed for 3D printing are linked down below. The first three parts, which I all printed in PLA filament for ease of printing, are the train base, the coupling mount, and okay, well, this is actually how they're 3D printed, the train's cabin. So, you can decide to keep each of your 3D printed parts in their original filament colour if you'd like to. If you're feeling more artistic, you can decorate each of the 3D prints as you go, like this one. To paint mine, I used some grey spray-on plastic primer followed by a water-based acrylic paints. Then a couple of layers of glossy sealer helps to seal it in and protect it. It's my first time painting 3D prints, and though it's not perfect, I'm quite happy with the results. All the paints and sprays which I use to decorate mine are linked below. And if you want to find out a bit more about the process I use to decorate my train, then I've written a rough outline which you'll find on my website. To assemble our first three 3D printed parts, we'll use four of our M3 by eight bolts
we can use some hot melt glue to fix our Wago style connector into the base of our print so far. You should inject some additional hot melt glue in the gap between the two connectors. This will provide us with some additional strength. Let's start working on the lantern, including LED for the front of our train model. You need to start by printing the inner and outer of the lantern case. We will first attach our five millimeter LED to the lantern's insert. To do this, it's simply a matter of inserting its legs through the two holes inside the cupped basin and then spreading them apart from the reverse so as to hold our LED in place whilst we work with it. Our resistor will be added to the positive or anode leg of our LED. You can identify this leg by the fact that it's longer than the other one. Now we are going to shorten this before we attach the resistor so that we can fit all of the electronics inside the lantern with some ease. So make sure that before you cut it, you've identified it and that you don't forget it. <laughs> before we solder the resistor to the LED's legs, you need to shorten it on both sides as well as the anode on the LED. Once this is done, you can solder them together. To each of these, add a separate 11 centimeter long piece of wire. When you bend the legs of your LED downwards, you'll need to ensure that the positive leg and its resistor don't protrude past the bottom of your 3D print. This is so that we can easily conceal it inside the rest of our lantern shortly. Before then though, add some hot melt glue between these two legs to help prevent them from shortening out and to provide some moderate strain relief. To create the reflective cup inside of our lantern, I used some strong kitchen foil. You can use some scissors to cut some strips of foil, which are then inserted and pressed into shape inside of this bowl. Make sure you fold the edges right over around the lantern so that they do not get caught and torn as you insert it inside of the lantern's decorative case. The next 3D print that you're going to need is the lantern's bracket. Once this is done, you can thread the LED's wires through the hoop on top and then use some glue to fix the lantern on towards the front edge. As we continue our way along the front of our model, you can print the front of the engine next. I printed mine with a very large brim to help ensure that it remained attached to the print bed. A quick lick of paint and we can then pass the LED's wires through the front section of the funnel. Use some glue, I used some super glue, to attach the lantern's bracket to the front of the model, making sure that it is level from the front. You don't want it to be wonky. Our model train project is now very quickly taking shape. Now that the wires for our LED have passed through the narrowest parts of the project they need to, we can add some DuPont style connectors to the end of it, a couple of female ones. This is very easy to do. In fact, I made an entirely separate video showing you just how easy it is. So you can check that out by following the card or the link down below. After these two wires though, the rest of the project's electricals are much easier to access. So if you don't want to keep making your own cables, though I promise you it's quite easy, you can opt for using some female jumper wires and trimming them down to the required length. And now we'll turn our attention to the atomizer, the magic behind the smoke effect. I want to quickly show you how it works so that you know what we're aiming to do as we incorporate it into our projects. The disc which atomizes the water has two sides to it. The larger silver side should touch the top of the wick, which when wet will draw the water to the atomizer. To test yours, like I am, you can use a USB cable to power the driver and then press the button on top to start the atomizer. A bit later on in this project, we will make some very simple modifications to this driver board 
so that we're able to control it using our smartphone instead of having to click the little button. The wick material should be trimmed to about 37 millimeters in length. And then this is inserted into the top of the funnel, leaving it ever so slightly proud so that we can be certain that the large side of our disc will make contact with the wick later. You can now insert the atomizer's cable down this cable chute. If needed, you can use your uncut brass rod to help feed it through. Then, carefully fix the atomizer into place. I used hot melt glue to do this so that I could easily readjust this later if I needed to. Don't forget that it's the larger silver side of our disc which should be pressing against the wick. The smaller side faces upwards. Now you can set this aside for a little while and we'll start to work on the drive carriage, which is the part of our model that will propel our train forwards. Once printed, we can use the drive carriage's handy cutting guide, which I have incorporated inside this 3D print to help you cut seven lengths of your brass rod to an appropriate length, which is roughly 39 millimeters. Once we've done that, then this print can carry on to be incorporated into the train. That's recycling. To use it, we're going to insert our three millimeter brass rod all the way into this opening until it hits the stop. And then we're going to cut our rod here. First, you're going to need to gently but firmly clamp the carriage inside a vise. Insert the rod again until it hits that stop. Then, whilst holding the rod steady with one hand, use a saw to cut the rod between the two fins at the end. Repeat this again until you have seven short lengths of brass rod. You can then use a file or similar to remove any sharp edges or burrs from the ends of each rod. This will make it safer for you to work with later and is much less likely to damage your bearings. Turning to the motor next, cut and strip two 15cm long lengths of wire. Solder a separate one to each terminal on the motor. Add a dab of hot melt glue to act as basic strain relief on our connections. I also painted the plastic parts of my motor in black paint. That's because I think it will fit in a lot better with my design than that bright yellow is going to. Once you've prepared your motor, you can use four of your M3x8 bolts to install it inside of your drive carriage. Now you're going to need to print four wheels for your drive carriage, but you may have noticed that there are only three designs to print. That's because the two wheels that attach to the brass rod axle at the front are identical, so you print this file twice. Whereas the two wheels that attach directly to the motor onto those white plastic axles are slightly different. The difference is simply that the point where the linkages attach is rotated around 90 degrees on one of them, as this will help make it less likely to jam as the train starts to pull away. After I 3D printed my wheels, and much like the rest of the model, I decided to apply a lick of paint to add some further interest to their details. Add one of your rubber gaskets to each of the four wheels. Then, our two wheels which are destined for the motor, these are the ones with the non-circular openings on the back, can be simply push fitted onto the white plastic axles of the motor. We are adding the gaskets to our train's wheels to help provide it with better traction on the tracks. It also has the additional benefit of reducing the noise coming from the wheels as the train runs around its track. To assemble the second pair of wheels, insert one of those brass rods which we cut earlier into one wheel, add onto this two of your bearings and then cap it off with the opposing wheel. This can then be pushed firmly into the carriage making sure that our bearings line up with these two slots. We can then take our two identical wheel links and attach them with some of our M3x8 bolts to 
each pair of the wheels on either side. Ensure that the wheels are rotated before you install the link so that the linking rod itself will remain horizontal to the ground. Now we can thread the motor's wires through the opening in the train's base. Then, with our motor towards the rear of the train, this entire assembly can be attached to the main body with an M4 by 20 bolt. Tighten the bolt holding these two pieces together and then loosen it ever so slightly so that they can rotate past one another without allowing too much wobble. This adds some more electronics to our project starting with the motor driver. The driver board is fixed into position on the train's base with at least two of your M3 by eight bolts. The two wires from our drive motor can then be connected to the screw terminals marked as motor A. If later you find the train drives in the wrong direction compared to what you ask it to do, then just switch these two wires over. This pair of cables can then be stored away tidily in this little groove and held into place with just a smidge of hot glue pressed in on top. Next up is our microcontroller. We're going to upload the code to the ESP32 before we install it inside of the front section of our train. Now to make this step much easier to follow, I've written some instructions up on my website, which you can read for free of course, and download all the code required to do this. It's very easy to do, so don't be intimidated if you've never programmed a microcontroller before. Follow the steps, come back here and we'll carry on with the installation of the hardware. After you've uploaded the code, we can print the board retainer and prepare it with two more M3x8 bolts. Before you add the ESP32, you'll need to remove the protective film covering the camera lens and then gently introduce a Z-like fold to the camera's ribbon cable. Do this by first ensuring the camera module is pushed into its recess. You will then need to encourage this slight fold of the ribbon cable as you secure the ESP32 so that it nestles into position up against the top of the print. Here is one which I have printed in half so that I can show you what I'm trying to explain. This is that slight fold in our ribbon cable holding the camera in place. And this is the ESP pushed not quite as far as it should do in yours. You can then hold it in place with the aforementioned 3D printed retainer, ensuring that the protruding side is up against the microcontroller. This is then attached to the rest of our model using another two M3x8 bolts from the underside of the train. Before we carry on connecting some more of our electronics, I want to say a massive thank you to everyone who helps support this channel. That's this amazing list of patrons and YouTube members who are generous, kind, and probably very good looking. Thank you. I also want to say thank you to 3D Jake who provide the filament whilst I prototype and film these projects and to PCB Way who also provide support. Thank you everyone for your support. If it wasn't for your help, I wouldn't be able to keep doing this and sharing these projects. Thanks. Moving on with our electronics. The next thing we can do is prepare a 14 centimeter long pair of wires with female connectors. For convenience, I just trim down some jumper wires and connect this to the five volt and ground pins on the ESP32. That's the top two on the right as shown here. The five volt wire from the top pins should be connected to one of the Wago connectors and the ground wire to the other connector. Remember which of the two connectors that you have connected your positive and negative wires to so that later on in the project, you connect the remaining power wires to the correct blocks. I should also mention that I have of course created a wiring diagram, which you'll find linked to down below if you prefer to follow one of those. Your next two wires should have female connectors on both of their ends and will be used to control our steam effect. They go below the first two wires on the ESP and then the bottom one of this pair connects to the one labeled B-1A on the motor driver and the other wire to B-1B. 
Again, add two more female jumper wires to the next pair of pins down the ESP. And the top one of this pair connects to A-1A and the other to A-1B on our motor driver. This pair of wires controls the speed and direction of the train's main drive motor. Use two short female jumper wires with one end removed and the wire exposed to connect the VCC connection of the motor driver to your collection of positive wires and the other to join the ground to your grounded collection of wires. The positive wire coming from the lantern's LED connects to the next available pin on the right hand side, whilst the ground lead will connect to the fourth pin down from the top on the left hand side. Now would be a great time for us to connect the power to our project so we can test everything that we have built so far. To do this, we'll make our USB power cable next. You'll need to attach two 22 cm long wires to the positive and negative contacts of your male USB connector. On my connector, the positive connection is on the right and the negative is on the left. If you're unsure about yours, you can plug it into a USB power supply and use a multimeter to test it. Once you've finished assembling your plug, you can pass its unconnected wires through the boiler in the cabin and connect the positive one to your positive Wago connector and the negative lead to the other Wago connector. Let's start up our train for the first time so that we can check that the Wi-Fi, the camera, the motor and the LED in the lantern at the front is going to work as expected. To do this, plug in your USB power supply. If the power is present, you'll see the red LED on the motor driver will illuminate. Wait just a few seconds and then search for the Wi-Fi networks on your phone. Connect to the one labeled as Smart Train. Once this is connected, open up the web browser and navigate to 192.168.4.1, which is the web page of our server. You should immediately see a live view from your camera mounted in the front of your train. How cool is that? Press light on to test the LED circuit and light off again to switch off the LED. Before you begin to test the motor on your train, it's a good idea to prop it up so that when you turn the wheels, your train doesn't run straight off the table. To drive your train, you should first choose a direction, forward or backwards, and then press faster to increase the speed of the wheels until they turn, then you can go faster still if you want to. And then you can press slower or stop to decrease the speed or stop the train and change directions as well. Don't forget that if your motor wheels are turning in the opposite direction to what you're expecting, you only need to swap the two wires around where they attach the screw terminals on the driver board. If you're experiencing any other problems, don't forget to have a look at this project's Discord server or in the FAQ section over on my website for answers to any common queries or problems that might arise. Let's add my favourite bit, the steam effect next. We do need to slightly modify the control board for the atomizer. First prepare two 6cm long wires which will be soldered to the power points marked positive and negative just behind the USB connector here. I've soldered the negative lead on the other side of the board here because it's much easier to access for me. Secondly, on the underside of our board, we'll need to bypass the control switch by using some solder to bridge across these two points. The board is then secured to the train using two M2 and a half by eight bolts. Connect the lead going to the atomizer itself to the driver's board and the negative lead to the inside connector of the motor driver and then the positive power lead from the driver to the motor B's outside screw connection. 
you can quickly reconnect the USB power. Press the steam on button in the app once you've reconnected to the train and if the light lights up, then everything is connected okay. Disconnect the power and we'll carry on. We can now print and secure the main part of the train's boiler section. This was printed in black PLA plastic, which I then painted as I have all the other parts. This can then be attached using two M3x8 bolts at the front and two M2.5x8 bolts towards the rear. Before we can go ahead and add some water inside of our funnel to test the steam effect, we'll need to make the train level, otherwise it will just tip all the water out the front. To do this, we'll go ahead and make the front set of wheels on our train next. You'll need to 3D print the bogey itself and four wheels. Add a wheel to one of your previously cut brass rods, followed by two of your bearings and then the opposite wheel. Fit this to the bogey and then repeat for the second axle. This is then all screwed to the underside of the train chassis using an M4 by 20 millimeter bolt. With the train now able to stand up level, we can add some clean tap water to the funnel. You should fill it up, but stop before it reaches the top edge of the printed plastic internals. The wick will draw the water up towards the underside of our atomizer. If you wanted to, you could put some hot melt glue across the top of this hole to help prevent any water from accidentally going down it. Now this time, pressing the steam buttons should result in the effect springing into life. How cool is that? And there's no risk of plants, pets or children burning themselves as this mist isn't created using heat, so it remains absolutely cool to the touch. Now there are only a few parts left to assemble, but before we go over those last few steps, I want to tell you a bit about my sponsor, PCBWay and their 3D printing service. I've used them before to produce custom PCBs for my projects, but for the first time, I've had them 3D print a full set for this project. I sent them the 3D files for this project and in less than two weeks later, the parts arrived extremely well packed and they look fantastic. The parts were produced using their stereolithography or SLA process, which made these parts from a liquid resin. I've bolted all of the parts together here and can't wait to fit the electronics and apply some paint to it. I think it's gonna look rather good. Follow the link in the description or go to pcbway.com. The plow can then be printed and attached to the front with two M2.5 by eight bolts. Now we can print and assemble the tender for our train. This is going to house our lithium ion battery pack and makes it easy for us to change or recharge the battery. Begin by printing the tender mid and base. Attach these two together using four of your M3 by eight bolts. We can then assemble two more of the tenders as we did earlier. Both of these are then attached to the underside of the tender using some more M4 by 20 millimeter bolts. Ensure once you've done them up, you loosen them slightly so that they can spin with ease. And on top of this, you can add the tender top, <laughs> obviously. The system that we will use to connect our train together with as many extra units or tenders as you'd like will be driven by magnets. This makes it very quick and easy to couple and uncouple these together. Your 10 by three millimeter magnets are glued inside of their holders so that their two facing faces 
attract each other instead of repel. The easiest way to do this is to put your magnets together, draw a dot on the outside and ensure that you glue these dots into the two holders. One of these is then bolted onto the underside at the rear of the train. The other is attached to the bogey bottom, which in itself is then attached to the bottom of the tender's bogey. To make the cable going to the USB connector less distracting, I wrap mine in some black insulation tape and then glued a 3D printed cradle for my USB battery pack inside the tender to help prevent it from rolling around. <laughs> oh yes, and let's not forget about the track itself. My track is 3D printed and you'll find files to download to print straight pieces, large corners, small corners, all sorts, and I'll be constantly adding more. They're all at an O gauge, so you can also run your train on tracks that you might buy from a modeling shop. I printed mine in PETG and to get this twin color effect, I just did a simple change of filament partway through the print. Now that you're finished, it's time to take your train down to the tracks and play. And yes, sometimes you're probably going to have to let the kids have a go. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. Don't forget to take a look at some of my other projects, such as the Sissy First Drawing Table, which magically drives a steel ball through sand, drawing out ever-changing patterns. The Drawing Machine, a simple and effective Arduino project driven by Gerbil. It's able to draw on paper, phone cases, and even cakes to name but a few things. And my Weatherbot, which shows you tomorrow's weather today. Cool, huh? I also have some things for sale over in my Etsy shop, all of which help to fund my next projects. And if you would like to consider regularly supporting the channel, then please have a look at my Patreon page. You'll find a link down below this video. Thank you so much for watching. Take care, do some good, and until next time, ciao for now. Like I've done with this train that train <laughs> we are adding the gasket gaskets oh <laughs> woo woo <laughs> so that we can test that the wi-fi motor something else <laughs>